Success isn't really defined by how much money you make. It's how big of an impact you leave on other people's lives when you're gone. I think that's like more of like my focus. And regardless, money aside, is I wanted to really try to inspire people to start their own businesses, to follow their passion and start companies around that. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in. Got a great podcast in store for you today. Enjoy. Welcome to the seventh episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. My guest today is Cameron Green. And Cameron, tell my uh, audience a little bit about yourself. Hi, so I'm Cameron. I'm actually an Atlanta native. Um, I own a social media company called Social Media Solutions, and I also do blogging, um, food, fashion, travel, and also do private events for Big Sky Buckhead. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's all fun though. So, I mean, if work's fun, that's all that matters. You have to have a passion for it, so. Mm. What's your background? So my background is marketing. Um, I went to University of Georgia, graduated with a degree in marketing and a, certi- and a certificate in professional selling. Um, so that's kind of like my base that helped, really helped me start my own business, especially those sales classes were great. Um, so if anybody who's listening who maybe is a student, um, definitely, if you're at Georgia or any kind of college, try to see if there's any sales classes. Okay. So sales classes at Georgia is one of the things Well, that some colleges offer sales classes. It's not just the University of Georgia, but I think that really helped me, especially with entrepreneurship and really understanding um, and kind of cultivating um, that background for me, besides my parents having their own business, which did help having some advisors along the way, too, but yeah. What kind of business do they have? Um, they actually just retired um, a little bit over a year ago. Um, they had an interior design firm. Um, so during like the, I guess, the high point of their interior design firm before the stock market kind of crashed and the housing market kind of went over um, in 2008, 2009, they had 25 interior designers, I believe, and three kitchen designers. Oh, wow. Um, so they were pretty big. Yeah, they were doing really well. Yeah. What kind of places did they design? Um, all residential, so mostly houses. Um, I mean, they've done some houses for some celebrities. They've done, like, average people. Does anyone who really wants to have their house look nice, I guess? Okay. Like, they're all different kind of backgrounds and um, all different kinds of industries, people they've worked with, so. Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in Dunwoody. Okay. Uh, the hoodie of Dunwoody. The hoodie of Dunwoody. Or should I say, <laughs> Funwoody. Funwoody? Oh, wow. Those are good. What else is there? Um, let's see, so I like to travel a lot. Um, oh, no, no, I was saying nicknames for Dunwoody. Oh, Dunwoody, I, I don't, I don't know, I think that's about it. I got that. I'm, there's one that I'm not going to say, and, and later, I'll tell you later. Bankwoody? No. Oh, I've heard that one, because there's a lot of banks in Dunwoody. True. I don't know, but yeah. So, where'd you go to elementary school, middle and high? I went to uh, Mount Vernon Presbyterian School from kindergarten through eighth grade, and then I went to Maris for high school. Nice. Yeah. What was that like? Catholic school. I mean, it was, Maris was hard, I'm not going to lie. Like, it definitely prepared me for college, but, I mean, I was playing, my freshman year, I was playing two sports where I was playing tennis and volleyball, Hence why I told you I don't have very good jumps, so I was playing back row for volleyball, but I was going between both those sports, and it was it was really hard. Like, I wasn't starting my homework until, like, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. Jeez. That was, like, my freshman year, so, I mean, I stuck to tennis and made the varsity team, and they were actually pretty good at tennis. We won state, like, 12 years in a row, um, and I contributed. It was, I'm not going to say I was, like, a starter, but, I mean, I did well. I was hard making the team in that, so it was quite an accomplishment. There we go. And that was freshman year through senior? Um, I made varsity my sophomore year, but I mean, I played JV in ninth grade, but um, so I played sophomore through uh, senior year, yeah. And volleyball also? Volleyball just my freshman year. Um, I, there wasn't really an opportunity. There was, Maris just had so much talent in volleyball that even if I played back row, like I probably wouldn't have made the team. <laughs> um, really? The, the, I mean, Maris recruited for, for sports. I mean, we were 15 in the nation, according to Sports Illustrated, when I was a freshman or sophomore. Wow. So, sports Illustrated? Yeah, Sports Illustrated ranked the best high schools in America for sports. And Yeah, I, um, I'm pretty sure Chesapeake was on there for wrestling and swimming mm-hmm. where I grew up. Yeah, do you, do you swim or wrestle? I did both of those. Yeah. Oh, see, I can't swim. I'd be in 
Yeah, no. Keep that. We'll keep that offline. I can't really. I can't really. Swim. I mean, I can tread for like. You can tread seconds. water. Okay. Yeah. But then I can't really guarantee what's gonna happen after like a, like a few minutes after. No. I mean, okay, okay. I just don't. I just don't float. Okay. I mean, I just. I used Sink, to, dense. During like swim lessons, I used to always like my parents tried to get teach me how to swim. I used to go to swim lessons, but I used to either fake sick or I would just like hide in the bathroom. Why? I just didn't like it. I think it's because my mom's never been a big swimmer, and that kind of thing might have impacted that a little bit. But it's weird because like my uncle, my mom's brother, like swam like the North Sea and stuff in Scotland. So I mean. Go figure. Oh, wow. Yeah, clearly we're just the odd birds. <laughs> <laughs> so, where's your family from? Um, my mom's from Scotland. My dad's from Rhode Island. Um, and like they moved to Atlanta like in the 80s and stuff. Um, my aunt and uncle were living down in Atlanta at the time. Um, but my, I have family in Scotland, Rhode Island, and I have some family here, like my aunt and uncle, and I have, I have a cousin and a couple cousins here. Okay. What all does your uh, family do around here? Well, my, my parents retired, so they're in Oregon now. So um, my aunt and uncle are retired. Um, I'm not really sure what my cousins are doing now. I know her, her husband does something like general contract. I think he's like a general contractor of some kind or does some kind of like masonry. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the exact, um, exactly what he does. And I have some other cousins that do like some other stuff as well. I don't know as much. So what do you like to do? What do I like to do for fun? Ooh, I just like, honestly, I'm someone who's always up for an adventure. Um, I love seeing, that's why I'm like traveling so much. I love seeing how people live. Um, I've been to a lot of countries. My goal is to hit 100 countries in the next six years. Um, I'll be at 61 at the end of the year. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, I just, I really just love traveling. The world's just so big, and I feel like that, I just want to see what all is, like, out there, and, I don't know, be exposed to different things. That's why I'm always up for an adventure. Like, if someone ever asks me, like, to do something, I'm usually, like, yes. Like, I treat going to the grocery store as an adventure, please. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just kind of, like, my attitude. I'm always up for a good time. I'm usually always down for trying something new, too, so. I love that. Yeah. I feel the same way. I go to the Whole Foods in Midtown sometimes for a little adventure. Well, I that's good that people washing, let's, yeah. let's be honest. That is an adventure. Did you go to the opening day? Oh, I didn't. I wasn't There's in a town. There's a million people in that store on opening day. I'm glad a I was not in town. people. Glad I was not in town. <sighs> right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of like my, I, I'm, I cannot imagine a million people. Like, so 61 countries? 61 countries, yeah. What's your... Favorite? Mm -hmm. I get asked this all the time, but I always say Japan, because I love Tokyo. To me, it's the best city in the world. Um, I really... Just the culture there is just so different. There's so much tradition. Um, the people are so polite. Like, they bow to you, and they do, like, the full bow, not yeah, all the way down, standing up. Um, different countries in Asia bow different ways, so some will just do the head, some will do the full bow, um, and also, I guess, the, there's the number one food city in the world, Tokyo is, um, they have the most Michelin star restaurants in the world, I believe it's like 450 something Michelin star restaurants, what's so, a Michelin star, the Michelin star, um, so basically Michelin, like the tire, they, Michelin? Michelin, it's Michelin, it's Michelin, I, Michelin, I thought it was Michelin, uh, uh. Same difference. Okay, anyway, my apologies. I always thought <laughs> it pronounced like Michelin, but... So, they rank like the best restaurants in the world. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Michelin is like a critic, and they rank the best um, restaurants based on presentation, food, um, overall, like, okay, yeah, atmosphere. I've definitely seen this so, it's like, think about like Zyga, but right. this is more of like times like and intensify that times like 100 and mm -hmm. they pick like all the best restaurants in the world um sometimes there are some restaurants on it that aren't super fancy um there are some like food stalls in asia that have gotten michelin stars and they actually don't want to have michelin stars because once they have a michelin star it gets rid of most of their local customers and there's been a lot of like feedback with a lot of these smaller 
kind of like daily, like everyday restaurants that will actually say, I don't want my Michelin star, you can have it back because they don't want all these tourists coming in. Yeah. Because they're already doing well enough and they just right. don't want to lose don't keep it like kind of local. their core. Right. Wow, that gives me chill bumps. That's crazy to think that there's Someone, literally businesses pushing away like, an accreditation like this. Yeah. It's wild. Well, do you know any places? Um, there were some food stalls. There was somewhere in Thailand, I believe Bangkok. I don't remember. The article came out like a couple of years ago. I remember posting it on, maybe it was a year ago, somewhere around there. Um, I remember posting on Instagram stories. Um, I have like a lot of chefs that following me on Instagram, so I always try to give them inspiration, especially for my travels of what I'm eating, just so they can also see, like, maybe that'll help them um, see it with their own menus, or just seeing what is trending in other areas, and a lot of times I'll post stuff, I just love food, I mean, food's like my number one, like, yes. let's be honest, let's like, be I, honest. I love to eat, I don't eat to live, mm. um, but yeah, so it just came out, and I just like sharing a lot of information, like, I always... I always try to give people shout outs when I can, like especially other chefs that You're have recognition. For sure. Um, so I always think that you always need to give credit where credit's due. And a lot of people don't realize a lot of just the hardships and a lot of the, I guess, hard, hard work that a lot of people go through in all different industries, especially like restaurants, or they put a lot of time in. You know, it's a lot of late hours, late nights, and a lot of stress too to make sure they keep those ratings and keep all those customers I always just try to you know give people shout outs and credit where I think this deserves so people can also know about you know who's behind their food mm. you're great at it I'd say you're one of the best shout outers I try to I give know. you shout outs oh I love yeah. it absolutely that's why I'm always down to do content for you because I know it's going to come back in troves of, of consistent credits and tags um so you have been featured on like more pages than maybe anybody that I know personally. I mean, for real, I've seen it on so many different kinds. You're always spotted on this, spotted on that, Delta, all these different. Okay, Delta, Delta was really cool. I'm not gonna lie. That was pretty. Dope. I had I had a friend contact me and he was like, "You're not gonna believe this, but you're on Delta's email today." And I was like, "I didn't get the email. I don't subscribe to all their emails." But I mean, that's a lot. They have a lot. I was of, gonna say, I was like, "Is she subscribed to the emails?" Even, because that is thorough, no. like on your shit. Like, no. is it, are they featuring green? No, no, no. So I mean. I mean, I love, my whole thing is, I like photography, and I like photos, and if people are going to want to work with me, and, you know, that's great, I mean, I'm just out there just kind of doing me, and if some people don't necessarily see what I'm necessarily doing, people are just like, oh, maybe it's just to get something or whatever, that's not really me, I just really like showcasing my passions, Absolutely. I want to show people the best places they can go, regardless mm -hmm. of budgets, in any kind of city that they're traveling to, for food, for activities for like going out or just really kind of cultivating like cool and unusual experiences and that's kind of like my goal and you know trying all different foods like I said like that Marishan uh, collaboration I'll be uh, making some ramen this uh, weekend it's so bad that gold spoon oh my god I everyone, DM'd you about it last night because the, everyone wants the gold spoon I've had some people like joke like I have a friend um, he may or may not be watching this later on, but he was said that she's, she's getting married and she's like, I want to add this to my wedding registry. And I was like, yes, girl, like the spoon and like the chopsticks are like awesome. I love gold. Gold. Gold member. Is that weird? <laughs> but that's all I thought of when like they sent me the packaging and stuff. Because it says it's bearish on gold. It's their new line. It's supposed to be more of like a craft ramen where not you add in like the egg you add in like pork to it it's just more of kind of like a base for flavor and mm -hmm. you do all the stuff so it takes kind of like those the cup of or instant ramen like one step up right you're definitely with the culture for sure i, I mean I, tr I try i just always try to like uh, just like i said i'm just trying to really do me and if i get some stuff out of it that's great i always try to tag people like brands and stuff or mm -hmm. use hashtags that correlate that probably does help sometimes i think you're really good at it and you preload them you create i, I create my hashtags i captions. will say this i do create my captions i actually have a note section hell yeah in my phone where Damn. i have probably like 200 captions that i haven't even used so i'll just pull them and i'll try to find a photo that matches the caption sometimes it's harder said than done not gonna lie 
Yeah, they're so witty and punny, though. Like, literally, I don't think you have captions without puns. Okay, no, that's not true. I do have some wordplay ones. Okay. And that's good. And I think, like, I, I, yeah, I, I, diversify. I, I branch out a little bit. I try to have some kind of inspiration. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, wait. Hold on. Hold on, David. I, I don't want to just Call be me the, right, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't want to just be the pun girl, okay? Like, Bet. I mean, Bet. to be fair, though, I the do... The punk. <laughs> I do keep all of my social media very PG, and I think that's what's kind of really helped me. I try to do it. Oh, well, that's my food one, but I try to keep everything PG because I try to. That's probably why that's helped me work with so many brands is that I don't have any cuss words, and the only time I think I ever had a cuss word, maybe except for like a song lyric, I can't really edit that out, obviously, for Instagram stories, but was when um, <laughs> I met Heather McMahon not too long ago. And one of my friends, Carly, who actually told me all about Heather McMahon, she, um, I knew she couldn't come to this event, so she was at, it was like a work lunch thing for Atlanta Girl Gang, and it was like back in February. So I had her give Carly a shout out. My friend Carly was like from Miss Georgia. What's Carly's last name? Carly Mathis. Mathis? Um, I got I a shout out. Know. Yeah. Sure. Like a shout out, and she like... I think she said the word like bitch or something, excuse me. Um, but I, I saw so many people just going into like my stories, like and just clicking on who is this person, like not just that I'm with, but I think it's because like when a cuss word was used, it was just, I mean, I've never seen so many people just like click on someone, and, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always try to think of, I have a lot of older people that follow me, and I'm just thinking, like, but yeah, so I try to keep everything clean. That's really smart. I don't Especially where more brands can work with you, work with you and incorporate you into theirs and vice versa. Because I've always heard like a lot of like horror stories um, where brands have wanted like to work with a bunch of people and how the feedback is they don't want to work with them because at the end of the day they're using cuss words or they're it's maybe taking it too far. And I know a lot of people like that in the Atlanta community mm -hmm. that I've heard like feedback from from other brands like oh we really like their photos but we're not gonna work with them because they use like cuss words like it's unnecessary especially them like you know people being females I mean it's not necessarily like the best look to cuss all the time on social media um gotta I feel like I try to keep it professional as if it's not just it's my personal brand smart I should probably tone down my cursing I, I'm really one of the biggest reasons I post is for the culture, like you. I like to figure out what's, stay on top of what's going on, what people are talking about, events, places to be, people to see, actual interesting topics, necessary topics to discuss, and you know, my political background. So yeah. I like to stay on top of that and just give people easily digestible. You know, that's one of the biggest things. It's like how you present yourself and, and give information is received completely differently by everybody else. And how you right. carry yourself too, yeah. So I mean, that's what sometimes I feel like that a lot of people don't necessarily get to know me outside of social media, where maybe they're like, "Oh, she does this, this, and this," and like it has just like in a lot of my personal relationships, where I feel like a lot of times people like because I do come with perks sometimes try to capitalize on that instead of really get to know me as a person, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the downside of being an influencer. But that's I think it's my is phone. So sorry, I'll, I'll silence it. It's so been an influencer since like 2011. So I mean, I've been in this world for like a long time. I mean, yeah, I might not have like millions of followers. If you're like, oh yeah, like you know, like no offense. And I'm like, I get it. But the thing is, I mean, hell, I could have a million followers too. I can go out tomorrow and go buy a million followers. But I'd rather keep stuff organic, and I could be on the same level as a lot of those girls. But the thing is, I'd rather keep stuff organic, still maintain good qu photo quality, good captions, descriptions. You know, I try to give some personal information. I try to share a little bit more and more. It's been very hard for me because I guess like how I got into this whole sphere was kind of in a, a really negative light. Um, I started like my social media channels. I, at the time I was going through a lot of stuff in my sorority and I was maybe given some hard times by people and even like I've been cyberbullied. I've had to deal with all that over the years. That's why I try not to share a lot of about me and I guess people think they know me from my Instagram and social media but they really don't know me. Like oh yeah I'm posting stuff that I'm at or that I'm doing or trying to cultivate these experiences for people but they don't know personal facts about me outside of that. Um, like they don't know stuff about my family. They don't know stuff that 
I don't know, most people would know unless they actually got to know me. So what's something you want to share with our audience that... Maybe that people don't know? That people don't normally know. Um, until they get to know me? Um, let's see here. Well, not many people know this. I've, I've never broken a bone in my body, although some people might disagree that who knows what happened to my finger. It was jam people before someone gives me some Knock on wood. feedback about that. Um, but also, I actually don't like chocolate. If you, unless you really get to know me, you're not going to know that unless maybe you go on a date with me and you order dessert. Like, you're not going to necessarily know I don't like chocolate. Um, so, also... Yeah, ditto. Yeah. And I'm, I'm an only child. Um, I wish I had siblings. Uh, I actually grew up with a family next that lived next door to us. They were my next-door neighbors. And um, the girl was, like, 40, we were born four days apart. There was a girl I visited in Austin. Um, oh, nice. I called her, yeah. And... Um, She's like my sister, essentially. Like I grew up with that family. Like we're four, we've been best friends since we were four years old. So mm. I mean, I have si they're like my adopted siblings, but I guess there are some facts that maybe people don't know. I mean, I grew up in the same ha house my entire life until my parents moved to Oregon. Um, well, actually, they lived in Atlanta for like about a year before they moved. But point is, I grew up in a house for 27 years, and it was super sad. My parents sold it. Not many people know that. That is a fact. Um, <laughs> that was sold? Yeah, well, I, I mean, it was. I grew up in the house, like, 27 years. 27 years. I mean, I mean, granted, I mean, I went to college. Like, I had lived with people in between that. Like, I never, like, actually really lived, lived there after, I, like, I graduated. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? But it was still, like, my, yeah. ho my home. Absolutely. But I always say that home is really where, I guess, your family is or just people that mean a lot to you. That's really more what home is um, than just an actual materialistic building and stuff like that. Facts. So. A house rather than a home, right? Right. I like to think of people out on the streets and whatnot as houseless rather than homeless. I like that. Because everybody has a home. It just depends on where it is. I agree, yeah. So what are a few brands that you've worked with lately that you really like? That you like their values? Because really it's about and especially me with also being an influencer, I won't even represent a brand unless I philosophically agree with them. I feel like that's like a hard question. Like I don't, I work with a lot that follow me too and I feel like that that's, and I have a lot of customers that I work with as well, but I feel like that's kind of a loaded question. It's like almost picking a favorite child. I like brands for different reasons, whether or not it's more on a healthier scale where it's food related. And they're trying to do something that's more like healthy eating, like a brand like, I mean, I haven't collaborated with them, so to speak, but a brand that I like is Smart Sweets. And, you know, it's three grams of sugar per bag. It's all plant-based. You could eat it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm saying like, just stuff like that. I like brands that stand for stuff or brands that are like doing good and evolving too as time goes on. Um, I'm not going to get specifics, but just... I don't know, just and even people that are just inventing like cool ideas or concepts. I mean, I don't really like I said pick, picking a favorite. I would just I just shouted one out just to give you an example. Of I've course. actually never worked with them. Um, I know I've met the owner and like I follow them religiously by a lot what of. There's some their brands products. in Atlanta that you like and that you like brands to represent. Brands in Atlanta. I mean, I work mostly with a lot of restaurants. There's not so much like brands. Brands. Those are still restaurants um, and brands. Yeah. Well, I guess the one that no one's surprised about is I just love Ford Fry restaurants. Um, I've always just enjoyed just my experiences there. Every time you walk in, I love how each restaurant is, is a new concept. Um, all the employees are all so nice and also helpful, and you know, they really go above and beyond. Um, it's not, so to speak, other restaurants either. I enjoy all of them for their own reasons, but. I guess the ones that I always just keep going to are on a weekly basis are Ford Fry restaurants. Which ones are those? Um, so Ford Fry owns a lot of restaurants. So he owns Little Ray, he owns um, Beetle Cat, mm -hmm. he owns Marcel, he owns um, King and Duke, St. Wow. Cecilia, JCG Kitchen, um, The Optimist, um, El Felix. And no, my cat Felix was not named after El Felix, people. I've gotten asked that many a times. Felix Sorry, Ford Fry. 
but hey, it, it's it's wild because you know, feel there's like a cartoon named Felix, like when we're, I guess Felix the cat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But L Felix actually has a little cat on the logo. Excuse me, it's the L Felix. My apologies. But um, <laughs> yeah, Felix was born several months before L Felix came about. But also, um, I'm forgetting like one or two in there. Um, I believe. Um, what's this? I think maybe I named them all. About right, but yeah. And so you get like a comp meal each time you go to no, these places. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I spend my own money for fry restaurants. I mean, it doesn't mean like I mean I collaborate with them where they've done nice things for me like any other restaurant group has in the city that I've collaborated with as well but like I that's why I say I always you know I try to get to know the chefs too I mean I think that's important um and just kind of seeing like you know how they've kind of got their start into cooking and that's the, one of my favorite collaborations I think with Ford Fry restaurants has been working on Attack of the Killer Tomato Fest with that and mm, really diving that behind great. and going behind the scenes and really getting to know the chef and kind of like hearing like their stories of how they got started into cooking and um, how like their favorite Ford Fry memory and a lot of that stuff and their favorite I think I might have asked them like their favorite ingredient to cook with not really sure that, that was a, a little bit ago so I apologize my memory is like jogging a little bit but um, yeah I mean that was probably one of my favorites just really going behind the scenes and I've, I've done that for several food festivals and I think that's really we get to know a lot of people that are cooking our food and I recently joined um um, I'm on the board for Group Organics Cast Iron and Collar Society. Cool. Everybody should join. Um, I'd love to. You're so you're so badass, by the way. It's ten dollars a month, and if you're in industry, I think I believe it's five dollars a month. And what it is is um, Cast Iron and Collar is basically connects farmers to the people that make their food and prepare the food, and connect foodies to the people, the farmers, and and the growers to um, the restaurants and the chefs and stuff like that where they do exclusive dinners and everything like that that's really cool as well. Um, there's cocktails and conversations, people that are launching cookbooks, people who have won James Beard Awards and it's really an awesome experience. Mm. Went to a really cool, you would have enjoyed this, I believe it was a vegan dinner at Gun Show. There was, okay, to be fair, there's one course that had meat, but the, it was phenomenal. Like they had real carrots, with um, carrot cake, but were like sweet, like um, oh no, not, not like sauteed, but caramelized carrots almost, I believe. And they had like carrot cake. Oh, it's so good! It was like one of the courses, and I mean, it, it was awesome. It, yeah, I'll fuck with the place if they have one vegan or plant-based option, because honestly, it's so heavily skimped. At Music Midtown this weekend, um, we were getting tacos. No vegan option? And there was one vegan option and we got it and it was literally the worst prepared. The vegetables inside were bad. Like they didn't care about it. There was no love put into the product. Is, is there like an app maybe that tells you like vegan uh -uh. areas? It's it's still pretty hard. It's two percent of America. Two percent of the population is, is plant based vegan. Well the reason why I asked is because my friend has um, celiac, so she has to find gluten free options and there's an app that tells her of all the gluten free mm -hmm. restaurants in Atlanta or any city that she travels to. That's smart. But someone well, like twenty or thirty percent of Americans have gluten allergies. So that's a way some do. 30,000 Some times actually more. do, and some, you know, it's say mental. they do, of course, it's trendy. Of course, of course, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but I'm saying that people like my friend who actually, like, legit have issues with right. celiac is, like, a legit thing. But, um, yeah, but someone should create a vegan app or be helpful, like, or even just say there are certain restaurants, I feel like, that are trying to add more vegan options. It's really new right now, yeah, and there's this documentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's been a vegan for over 30 years. I didn't know that. About the, it's a movie, it's a full-fledged movie, and it's gonna be amazing. Wow. I'm excited. Because I'm, you know, at so recent into this, nine and a half months. I know, you're looking good. Yeah, I feel you're good. Slimmed down. Slimmed down heavy when, when uh, we met. And did that photo shoot, I feel like I was kind of like towards my worst. And you're always so nice, like, no, you looked fine. You yeah, did yeah, look yeah. fine. But if we were to do before and after pictures, then and today, it's a whole different, like my body, of course, but my face, I feel yeah, like Yeah, I need to slim down a little bit too. I feel like I've been eating too much.
Alright, he has that little milk stash. <laughs> Dead serious, got milk! Got vegan milk! Hip milk? <laughs> anyway. Um, so I guess like a... My whole thing is in terms of like... Success, like yeah, I have my ups and downs, especially with entrepreneurship. Any entrepreneur does. It's more about adapting and really kind of... Adapting with changing um, things that are going on and everything like that. I guess like my one thing that I always say that's kind of important is, you know, success isn't really defined by how much money you make. It's how big of an impact you leave on other people's lives when you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. So I think that's like more like my focus is like, and regardless, money aside, I mean, I think my, my whole thing is I want to truly really try to inspire people to start their own businesses, to follow their passion and start companies around that. Like anyone's capable of creating a business or company that has an idea regardless of how old you are. And it's more of, you know, just taking the risk to start that, um, no matter where you are. And they always, I guess the old, I think there's a saying that goes something to the effect that you always want to start something when you don't feel like you're ready for it because mm -hmm. it's, that's the best time to start something new. Facts. So, something I ask everybody is, what are your personal, professional, and fitness goals? Honestly, to stay true to myself and, you know, really just inspire people through things that I have passions for, really show them experiences, no matter if it's whatever kind of budget it is, just to show them what is out there in the world and what they can see. And, like, I know a lot of people, I'm seeing my trip to, like, Palestine, and especially when I did a half a day trip to Bethlehem, that was really cool. Um, to go past the the barricades and um, into West Bank, but you know politics aside, I don't really feel like there. I didn't feel it in any danger when I went over there. I felt extremely safe, um, a lot safer than most places I've been to in Atlanta. In fact, um, who'd you go with? I went with a group called Kentucky. It's for 18 and 35 year olds. Um, it's like an Australian tour company, hmm. and it's how I do a lot of my travels around the world. I mean, it's very affordable. Um, and it includes like a lot in terms of um, like tours, activities, your hotels, and then also your transportation. Huge. Yeah, which is a huge right there. And your photographers. <laughs> oh, I do. I, I mean, some people do know how to take photos. I mean, I have taught people on my trips and um, how to take photos. I always just set people up for the shot. Um, like I told you, I love photography. I'm very picky about images. And I guess because I've done a lot of learning throughout the years where something has been off and I wish someone had told me about it like where maybe it's like I don't know my hair not all being like in the back when I'm taking a photo and it's just like this much and it looks awful because it's as you all can see like you can't it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing to the eye you have to have all your hair in the back to make it look aesthetically pleasing it's like a little I didn't hopefully I didn't wacky with my hair but <laughs> um, it's like little tips and tricks like that but I think it's just the more you do something the more you learn and, you know I always try to watch from other people as well because I think that's important to a learning experience I feel like that's really important is that you always want to keep learning and when you stop learning then there's something wrong and that it's time whether or not you're in a career that you feel like you just have kind of stopped learning and just at a point like that's time for you that's when that door is shutting to really try to find something that another door that's going to open for you and really help you blossom and um you know keep evolving love it who are some of your inspirations inspirations oh all these are on the spot man like i wish i had got to think of some of these questions before um i would definitely say like my parents for sure like they had their own business and you know they've always inspired me like to become better and do better and you know always aim aim high, like never aim for the apples that are on the ground, always reach for something that's better. Mm -hmm. um, and always put your, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. It's just one step in front of the other, it's something I've always been taught. Um, definitely, I don't really follow a lot of like celebrities, so to speak, on social media, mostly because I really have to kind of get to know somebody first. A lot of celebrities I do follow, I've, I've met in real life, or mm -hmm. I mean, our, I follow some bloggers that I feel like are very inspirational. Um, like one girl, her name is Sear Sucker and Saddles, and she's very inspirational in the fact, her name's Beth, and she always encourages people to um, like eat healthy, and she created a cookbook that 
of how to eat healthy based on some diet called Faster Way to Fat Loss. It's like a six-week program that she does and um, also encourages people. Like, she was great. She raised $22,000 off her platform of doing something good to go all go to Bahamas Hurricane Relief and all went to the Bethany Frankel's um, fund. And it was awesome. Like, that happened in, like, y'all, like, three or four days. Like, that. how inspiring is that? Like, those are kind of people that are, like, they're using their platform for good and not just, mm. oh, look, like, I, tr- I really try not to be like, look at me, here's me posing in front of something. I, I try to, like, do something inspirational or I, I, it's harder to then dumb all the time because I don't always have something witty to say. <laughs> but, I mean, I always try to make it more about, like, especially my stories. That's why I might, when I travel, post a lot because I want people to really see, like, you know, things that you can see, like, especially in the desert like that was wild like I've never been in a desert in my life like that was cool but you know you get the you get the point like it's really just trying to have inspire people like in different ways like maybe uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm on the board of an uh, organization called Hope Atlanta and it's their own professional board and it's uh, really help and homelessness in the city of Atlanta so um, I help raise like auction items to donate for the silent auction through a lot of like my network and I try to use a lot of like that um, of just restaurants and people I've met through my collaborations um, and that's how I utilize a lot of those to help do good with it so it's not just you know what I'm saying where everyone can really help each other and you know there are a lot of I feel like there yeah there's a lot of stuff going on like right now in the Bahamas or all the hurricane but we have to also pay attention to what's going on in our own city as well um, I mean I used to live in Grant Park I used to drive underneath the bridges every day where Grady is I always wanted to stop but you know like being a woman it's can't necessarily stop because it's a safety thing and um especially when there's more of them than there are of you like i mean and then this organization is really trying to help these people find housing or help them find employment or other services they may need as well which is really cool and you know it's, it feels really awesome to be part of something that's like bigger than yourself i love it that's why i fuck with you cameron you're always using your platform for good and helping i try to it's Selflessness is about it for sure. I know, like I've, I mean, I myself gotten caught up in the rabbit hole, or in the past, or maybe social media. I can't. I I've had problems just like, the, I guess the discrepancy between like real life versus what's not real life. Because I guess like what I do and a lot of that stuff does goes hand in hand. And I've created a lot of boundaries for myself over the years. Where you know, there's a lot of times people don't know where I am, and I try not to necessarily show where I'm at or whatever. Like. Um, or what I'm doing, and I think that's important is that, especially with people who maybe want to get into the influencer world or whatever, but I think I always encourage people, like, don't put everything about your life on there. You gotta, you gotta maintain you and maintain your, yourself, too, and I think that's a big focus that a lot of people lose, especially with social media today, and I feel like a lot of social media has taken a lot of mystery away, especially when it comes to dating. Oh, I don't, I mean, that's a whole other topic, man. We can, we can, I could be here all day Podcast talking about that. Podcast number two, we'll talk about I'll that. Be, I'll be there all day. I'll send you some know. prompt questions. Oh, I don't need prompts. I can go, I've got, I've got so much stuff I can tell you about for days. I'm not even kidding, like, the amount of stories I could get through, but. What about Facebook putting dating on their platform? I think that, in all honesty, I feel that Facebook kind of did that as a last resort to get a lot of the millennials back to Facebook because they realize they've lost all the, I mean, yeah, Facebook owns Instagram, so yeah, they still have that platform that caters to that the generations there, but I think from a marketing perspective, paid ad perspective, they're trying to do that to bring a lot of those people back so that, yeah, now they have even more of a demographic to um, reach when it comes to paid advertising. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's an incredibly insightful point. Um, yeah, it might bring me back. <laughs> Lord help us all. Oh God! I mean, I don't even get anything out of Bumble or Tinder or any of that. I call them. I hate to say this. I mean, I've met like some cool people through it, but not anybody of any guys I've really maintained like friendships. I feel like through where I hang out, like maybe it's like a social media friendship, but I feel like that's not real all the time. Um, but I feel like I call this dating apps more like time wasters where if you're not doing anything and you really are not doing anything then that's kind of what you do to fill up that time but I mean I don't 
I'm like the worst at responding to those apps. I just oh man, I get off for weeks and months so at a time. Much. Yeah, I've just and I've, so I've already time. like I've I've swiped on all the good ones, and so there's like nothing really left, and there's probably already it's not, prompts people are and conversations. People constantly coming to the city, but you know how Atlanta is like one of the worst cities for dating in like the U.S. Though, right? Is it? Yeah, you you know. I mean, come on now, for real. You didn't know that? <laughs> I mean, why? Why is There was like a statistic? study that came out, well, according to some other article that came out last year, they wrote it in Atlanta's number one, and I laughed in their face when they put that article out. But they said that they, were, they ranked 38 of the top cities. So Atlanta was 34 out of 38 or something like that, so we're bottom. Um, I, it's not so much Just like between getting... between like price and convenience. You no, know, it's not so much getting a date. I think it's more that people just don't necessarily either know what they're looking for or more of that they're... I mean, the whole thing about those dating apps is I don't have to commit to somebody. There's going to be someone hotter I might swipe on tomorrow. Right. And I think that's part of the thing that I feel like that dating apps have done that's been kind of in the wrong is that, that they have this thing of like this oh, if you keep swiping, like, you never know who you're going to find, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to keep, like, some people just do it for the thrill of swiping and don't even intend on, like, going on any dates with people, which is just as bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you get the point. It's just, I, I think it's, I've always said this. When dating apps start incorporating video, I know that Bumble, apparently, you can do it from, like, the person that you're talking to, but I feel like that's more awkward. What I mean by video is, when dating app allows you to record your name, like basically you're slating and you're like an actor going to an audition. Like, hi, my name is Cameron Green. I'm 29 years old and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Something like that. But let's not say Atlanta, let's say Buckhead, you get the point. Slating. And if you were to record... Buckhead, you get the point. <laughs> if you were to record yourself for like just having like 10 seconds of that, of being able to hear someone's mannerisms, their voice, stuff like that. I think you like can that, do that. Uh, no, I did do, I did try for the first time on, like, Sunday. I did do, Hinge has a thing, and it's, like, live on Sunday at 9. And you can connect to, like, three or four people. And it was, like, it was cool to be able to, like, see people in real life, but, I mean, I think that'd be more cool if people did that, like, going forward. If you Are you talking about, like, a Snapchat messaging back-to-back -back on No, I'm talking about it's a video video. call. And it's like, it's only Sunday at 9 or whatever. It's like, a, it's not Hinge, excuse me. It's um, The League. The League? I haven't yeah. downloaded that one. But I'm saying more, so if someone creates hey, a... Siri, download The League. <laughs> I mean, I just tried it the other day, but I'm saying if... I feel like if someone were to create a dating app that does something where you swipe on people, and then when you connect or whatever, like, it has to be more live and more, like, uh, live in order to connect. Like, you have to both be online to connect, then it connects you to video. Because I think it'd be more important. I, I mean, think about how much time you would waste going on unnecessary dates because you show up and the person's, like, not what you expected. They're just really quiet. Like, maybe you're complete opposites. Like, you never know really what you're getting until you honestly... Been there, them. for sure. Everybody's been there. Especially girls, they can really get away with, like, making a different... Uh, yep, editing photos, I know. Looking so different in the pictures, too. Filters! I mean, I mean, it's awful. I mean, even guys use filters, too. You'd be surprised. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it both ways. Um, it's some girls, especially... We probably have, what, like, 100 mutual friends on Facebook? I don't know, but... Something like probably that. Probably And... Oh, man. It's like, once... Once... I feel like girls, guys too, use a face filter, certain kind of filters, they never go away from it. I know, They're I don't using use it, it as much as I used to. Published, published oh, pictures. I don't, I don't put Tier oh. one. I've only once used one in a published photo, but that was like I told you there was a reasoning behind Whatever. that. But yeah. like, I I never... And I saw it the one time. I said yeah, he called me. <laughs> I, I, that's because I love Cameron, and, and if you see something, say but something. But he didn't know, like, the concept behind right. it. But had he known, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have done that. I get it. But my whole thing is I have used, since we've had that conversation, even personally, I've stopped using a lot of the filters. Like, I try to use them less and less. I mean, it's harder said than done, especially when you're getting some, like, wrinkles up here. You get what I'm so saying, people. Bad. Oh, my God. I had, to, I had to throw in a laugh. But I'm saying... I, I've tried to use them less and less since we've like talked about that too, and I've I've seen a lot of, more and more people have been voicing their opinions on 
on filtering and stuff like that. It's different if you do it like once in like a great while, but doing it every day, I try, I try not to. I agree. And there's different ways to use them, this and that, like spot touch on Photoshop, I'm kind of okay with that. Like, that's fine. There's always like little blemishes and stuff that's different, that yeah. happens between also using Liquify on Photoshop and oh, changing I'm more the of like, structure, making your eyes bigger, your face narrower, your Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, let's not let's get not get ahead of ourselves. I might do a little bit of like editing, but not anything that's crazy that people are like, oh, she made herself look like a toothpick, and she's not a toothpick. Not doing that, guys. You are a toothpick. Okay, well, thanks for being nice, but yeah. <laughs> but my point is that I, I don't try to over edit. I try to keep it natural looking. I just, you know, I, a lot of times I just try to make it look balanced and symmetrical. It's just my whole thing. It's more, Bad. yeah. Symmetry is the most important thing exactly. in the world. That's all I care about is symmetry. But other than that, I mean, it is what it is. I try to smile more right. symmetrically. There we go. Um, because more, a lot of people have like just a little bit I more. Do, Mine's on this side. Oh, Yours I, is probably the I don't same. Know. Yeah. Mine's more if I do like a smile. Sometimes like sometimes if you catch me, you'll see a little bit of teeth, and like I'm just like, how do I stop doing this? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound like a little bit of a narcissist there for a second, but I mean I've I've, I've really tried to stop doing it, and like I've really try to pay more attention to a lot of that because I feel like people have just gotten so caught up in that like culture and just. I don't know, I mean. So what's something you're looking forward to? Something I'm looking forward to? Ooh. I'm going on a trip with my parents um, to the Caribbean, um, well, it was actually the Panama Canal, so we're doing a cruise and we're going to like Panama, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and Colombia. And I might have gotten, oh, and Panama, of course, I don't know if I said that, but. I've been to Panama. Is it cool? It's interesting. Have you seen the, the canals? I haven't seen the canals. Oh, that's what we're going to see. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be fun. And Costa Rica. Exciting. Costa Rica is amazing. That's what I've heard. Pura Vida, which means pure life. Pure life. Oh, uh, I don't know. Is that an actual town? Or pura Vida that, is, is their, their saying. Uh, it's their motto. You're going to hear Pura Vida something. everywhere that you go. It also just means live life, give life, love life. Pura, though. Pura, just like Adam's new bar. Pura or Buena Vida? Buena Vida, very similar. Good life, pure life. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's something I'm looking forward to. I mean, is there is Mr. Atlanta podcast number one all about you? What do you mean? Well, we got to know more about you, too. I mean, they can find more about me all through the profile. I really, I'm doing this to spotlight people I like. And that well, thank I feel you. can give influence, love, and positivity to everybody and because the internet is so important it, and I feel like everything that, that we're talking about these words now today will be indexably searchable later through Siri like hey Siri tell me the restaurant Cameron and David recommended on the Dave, Mr. Atlanta podcast like that will be soon look he, she's trying oh 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 hey look at this y'all technology at its finest it does listen all the time, so. Big Brother's always watching. Always. You know about like live, um, live ads? Like if you'll talk about something with somebody and see an Instagram sp sponsor ad about it right the now. Illuminati are always watching people. Well, it's just constantly. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. and they it's sell scary. our data in real yes. time. But no, because a lot of times it's not it, you're even saying stuff. It's more like you're thinking it, and that's happened to me a few times, and that's scary, y'all. That's all I'm gonna say. It's because they've predicted us. They've, there's so many, you know what Cambridge Analytica is? No. If you don't know what Cambridge Analytica is, Google it, go to Netflix, watch The Great Hack, and it's all about this company that found 3.5 thousand data points on 40% of America Dang. before the election 2016, it Trump all that information, also gave it to Britain with the Brexit. That's the reason that happened. They've done a lot of things. They're not in existence anymore. And Facebook was originally fined like $5 billion. Oh, that's why all that came this from. This is yeah, okay. from that. Right. Huh. So Interesting. it's really, really important. I get chills bump thinking about it he because does have, he does have it's, the it's, it's right now in the future. And if we're not aware about it, then we're fucked. So we need to be really hypersensitive aware about where our data is going, and that is the most valuable thing that we really have. 
Well, I feel like this is a pretty good time to wrap up. Yeah, thank Cam you for Cakes. having me. Yeah. Um, tell everybody where they can find you online. You can find me online at, well, I have multiple handles, y'all. Let's hear them. We have at Peacha To It. Instead of like a beat to the restaurant, we peach ya to the restaurant. Peach to It. Um, that's my food Instagram. And then I have, like, my personal is C Green. It's at S E A underscore G R E N E underscore. And then I also have, like, my fashion and travel blog I, um, it's called Strat Heart for Life S-R-A-T H-A-R-D F-O-R-L-I-F-E and now I'm done being a teacher now so back to regular <laughs> scheduled programming Strat Heart for Life it's like a sorority yeah a sorority kind of thing yeah well thanks well for guys thanks so much for tuning in thank you for being here yeah and great little you, photo shoot before and if you made it through the whole thing Props to you. I want to be your Props new friend. To you. Absolutely. Go ahead and give Cameron an ad on the Instagrams or internet. <laughs> and if you're watching from my channel, go ahead and follow Mr. David Orland Brown. Yeah. All right. My lady. You asked me to commit already. Well, I have to give the company like a, a like an update of when the, they're gonna get photos eventually. Um, when do you need to have them? I don't have not checked the deadline. That's part of the reason. <laughs> I just got the outfit on like Friday to be fair, so we're okay. What? Who's the company? It's V Active. And they're a company out of Idaho. Sun Valley, Idaho. Nice. Middle of America. You ready? Yes, I've never done one of this before. <laughs>